In this video, I'm going to present a guide to G4S interview questions and help you plan strong, confident answers that will maximize your chance of getting the job. So let's look at how you pass a G4S interview. So the first thing is get the basics right. So show up on time and dress formal for the interview. If you get those right, it's a good start. The next thing that's very important for G4S interviews is to bring all the documents they ask for. So check all the emails and communication you've had. If they say bring these documents, make sure you bring them because G4S has in the past, I've heard, canceled interviews interviews because people don't have essential documents that were requested. The next thing you need to do is bring all qualifications and licenses that you have. They may ask to see these and also it's a good thing to have them ready and prepared so that you can use them to back up your answers in the interview. You need to know what questions to expect and in this video I will show you those that have been most frequently asked in G4S interviews and then what you need to do is you need to plan answers to these before you interview. So you can go into the interview with answers ready to the most common questions. So let's look at the questions that you will experience. So they often ask, what do you know about G4S? And if you're interviewing, you are expected to know the company. So to pass this question, you have to have firstly fundamental knowledge. They want you to know the basics. Then you want to basically show them that you've actually done some research. And then the next thing is, you want to know more than most. So your goal with this is to have researched the company to a level that you can give an answer that is stronger than the average person giving an interview. And what you can do then is prove that you're the right hire. So let's look at the key facts that you could take to your interview and discuss in order to be successful. So the first thing you do if you're asked this is you say it is a major international provider of security services. That's not everything they do, but it's a simple and short description of their business. Then you start to expand it and show some more knowledge. So they provide security and outsourcing. So they can do, for example, facilities management, not just security, they've got a huge outsourcing business alongside that. They can provide trained and screened officers to clients. So instead of clients having to hire their own security officers and having their own security function, they can bring G4S in to do that for them. They also provide security systems alongside the officers and they have a large care and justice services business and things that that does is, for example, they could provide pr prisoner transport. They do in some cases manage private prisons or manage prisons on behalf of a government and they have detention facilities, for example, immigration detention facilities are sometimes run by G4S. They also support policing, so police may have certain back office systems that G4S may support with. They also have some involvement in cash management, so collecting cash from businesses and managing various things involving carrying large amounts of cash, which obviously has a lot of security implications. They have a name that is G4S, which of course comes from somewhere. So it's Group 4 Falk and Securicore. They were merged and that's where the G4 and the S come from. So it's a good idea to know that bit of history. The two, the Danish company and the British company forming G4S. They completed this merger in 2004. So the companies that are part of G4S are a lot older than that, but the merger happened in 2004, creating G4S. They have now recently been taken over by Allied Universal, which is an American company. So they are now part of an even larger group. And they are still a London headquartered company. And that's also a good fact to take. So talk through what I've just discussed here and you will have a good answer ready to go. The next one is what is your availability and G4S are going to be very, very interested in this and you've got to get it right. So I'm going to show you the best answers to be successful and you want to try and tailor an answer that is as close to this as possible. So the first thing is, yes, I can. The more you can say yes in the interview, the better it is. Remember, they're looking to hire people with the right availability and every time you say no to something, you are reducing your chance of getting the job. But of course, if you cannot possibly do those times, then this wouldn't be the right job for you. But if you do want to maximize your chance of being successful, the more you can say yes, the better. You want to show that you can be flexible. So if they ask follow-up questions, you want to try as much as possible to show off that flexibility. Keep an open mind. So if you're very close-minded and you're saying, no, I will not work these times, I will not ever work at night, then it shows that you're perhaps very close-minded and that if you are an employee, you're going to be heavily limited in your availability and that's going to present some problems. But 
fundamentally what you're trying to do is meet G4S needs. So they're wanting to hire the right people with the right availability and you want to try and show that. So good phrases that you could use in a G4S interview would be things like, I have very good availability and can work flexibly around business needs. Make it clear if you have good availability, say that you've got good availability because that's really what they're looking for. You could say I'm able to work both day and night shifts as required if that's one way that you think about it. Typically, night shifts are paid slightly better, so that may tempt you. You may say, I'm happy to work all of the hours on the job advertisement. So increasingly, G4S is being a little bit more open about the times in which people are to work. And rather than giving random shifts, are trying to move towards more fixed shift pattern. And if your job advertisement has something about that in it, you may want to reference that. The next thing is you could say I'm open to working overtime if and when needed, which is a nice thing to volunteer. You might not ever be offered overtime. It might not be available, but that doesn't matter. Just the fact that you've said that you'd be open to it is a nice positive in the interview. So try and use as many of these phrases as you can and focus in your answer on what you can do and say yes as much as possible. And that's going to help you. Likewise, they may ask things like, can you work weekends or overnight? And the ultimate answer to this is really just yes. That's what they want you to say. There's not a really strong answer and an okay answer. It's just that yes is the answer they want. Because you've got to remember, they ask this because they need these times. If they have got on their list of questions that they have planned to ask, can you work weekends? They are probably looking for people who can work weekends or they have that in mind. So whenever you're asked about a specific time, there is a reason behind it and you want to try your best to say yes to it. You could, of course, choose to say no, but remember that if they've asked this for a reason, that could reduce your chances of getting the job. The next one is why are you leaving your last job? And this is not one that you want to try and make up on the spot. I would just have a simple short answer that gets you through this question because one of the things they're looking to do is to dig out things that are bad, things that you wouldn't want to advertise and things that they could use as perhaps a reason why you are maybe a great hire. And quite often people answer this really badly and can lose the whole job. So I'm going to give you a list of some good things that you can say and then some bad things that if you say these, they will really put them off from hiring you. And in fact, a lot of people do say the bad things and it loses them the job. So let's look at the good side and the bad side. So good reasons is you're looking to gain a promotion. If this is a job that's above your previous job, that is, of course, a great reason for moving job. G4S role is a perfect match for my skills. So be really, really positive about it. If G4S is offering a slightly better salary, that could be one reasonable motivation. Talk about the positives of G4S. So you're always focusing on why this is a great job as part of your answer. So you're leaving your last job because you're so excited about this new G4S job. You could be moving location with your family. For example, your partner may have got a job in a different city. So you need to get a new job because you're going to live somewhere else. That's a perfectly reasonable reason. You might have worked for a company that has collapsed or it's restructured. And that was nothing to do with you. And it didn't affect it, well, basically had nothing to do with your performance. It was all external and you had no control over it. You may say you have a very long commute and this job is much closer and only use that if it is quite a long commute. You may have taken a career break. So for example, you may have had some caring responsibilities that made you come out of the workforce or you had a family or something like that. That's a perfectly reasonable reason that you've left your last job, taken a career break, and now you're re-entering the workforce. So that's another good reasons. So try and say the good reasons. On the flip side, the really bad things that they hate people saying is my job was awful. Management were terrible. I had a falling out with a co-worker. It was a terrible company. I got into a fight with management. They hated me. I was always being criticized. They wouldn't promote me. Anything that is negative, that attacks a former employer really, really does not go down very well. If you start saying bad things about management and a co-worker, they will assume even if they're wrong, that perhaps you were the problem. That if you're saying that management was terrible, it might be that management were actually very, very good and that they were always criticizing you because there was a problem there. That's what they are going to think. It could be that management was actually the worst management ever and they were awful and it was toxic and terrible. That could be 100% true. But in an interview, if you criticize management, it looks very bad and they will probably look decide with that management and say, well, if the managers had a problem with you, 
are we just going to hire you and also have that same problem? So never, ever criticize your former employer. So stick to the good reasons and don't say anything on the bad reasons list and you will survive this question. The next one, which is, of course, good um, to be asked is when could you start? But remember, this may be just in their list of questions and they ask everybody. But there's two good answers to this. One of the best answers would be, I would be happy to start at your earliest convenience. And the other answer is, if you've already got a job, you say, I'm currently employed um, and could start immediately after completing my notice period, which is, and find out what your notice period is. Because that's really the reason why they're asking this, is to get a feel for when you're able to start. And it may be they need someone very quickly, or it may be a case that they might be a little more flexible. But of course, if you are applying as someone who is already in employment, they will know that you will have a notice period and that is very, very standard and that should not be a problem. So pick one of those and that's really the best answer. The next one that they often ask about is tell me about your work experience. And you've got to be systematic here. You've got to be focused. So you, of course, give your full job titles and you tell them about the jobs you've had, but you need to be more strategic. Some jobs they might not be interested in. Some jobs they might be extremely interested in. So you have to focus your answer in the right way. When you're talking about your jobs, you need to say, what did you do and learn? I'm going to give you a list of things that you might have done and learned in your previous jobs that would be great for a lot of roles at G4S. So if you've got any experience on the list that I give you in a second, say those things. What you want to also focus on is the most relevant. So what job were you applying for at G4S? What jobs have you had in the past? and talk about those jobs that are most relevant most. Some jobs you might just give the name, other jobs you might talk a lot about. And anytime you've worked in, say, security or a job that's very similar to a G4S job, talk a lot about that. Any qualifications and licenses you've got or you've gained, mention those. Have a reason for leaving your last job ready, not so you say what it is, just in case they ask about it because they may ask. And then everything you say, link it back to the G4S job. So talk about your previous job and say, I learned these things, which will help me be great at G4S because I have experience in these things. So you're always using this question to show them that I have got the experience and that I can do the job. So my real top tip is be confident in your experience. If you're confident you have good experience, the answer has a lot more power to it. And really what you are trying to do is persuade them they can do the job. They're asking about your experience to see if you have experience that's gonna make you good at the job. So let's look at the sort of experiences that might be really helpful in G4S job. So for example, managing aggressive customers. If you've worked in security, you've worked in customer service, and you have dealt with difficult and aggressive customers, but you've managed to do it in a calm and professional way, that's great experience that might be relevant to a G4S role. If you've had restraint training, you can mention that. If you're someone who's can remain calm under pressure and you've worked in pressured environments before, that's a good bit of experience. If you've been working in teams and you're good at working in teams, mention that. If you've used de-escalation or had training in de-escalation or you've got examples of times we use it effectively, that's a good thing to mention. If you've got lots of experience working with the public and you're applying for a role that involves working with the public, mention that. If you're first aid trained, that could be something good to mention. And if you've got experience working antisocial hours and applying for a job that involves antisocial hours, that can be quite reassuring because working antisocial hours is difficult. So if you're hiring someone who's done that before and can do that successfully, that is a positive for you. So go through that list, focusing on your most relevant experience and try and say as many of those things that I've got on that list to try and show them that you have the right experience to be successful at G4S. So that's how you answer that question. Another question they might ask is, where do you see yourself five years from now? And it's good to have a bullet point answer to this. You only need a few sentences that just explains where you're trying to go. And it doesn't have to be an exact, in five years, I will be doing exactly this. A rough outline is, of course, fine. So let's look at a good answer and a bad answer. So in a good answer, it's sensible. So don't start saying ridiculous things. It will make you look very silly. A good idea is maybe to look in, on LinkedIn, look at people who work for G4S. What were they doing five years ago? What are they doing now? And that gives you an idea of what is sensible. You may think about how will you get better? Because in five years, you should be even better at what you're doing and you should be constantly learning and developing. And if you're talking about promotions, you're talking about moving up, talk about earning those, not just expecting that in five years, you will be this magically. Talk about how you're going to get there. And then think about how G4S is part of this. Good answers involve working with the company. 
bad answers are things that are silly or unreasonable because it makes you look very, very, very stupid, basically. Then anything that's not related to the job is not worth mentioning. One of the worst things you can do is insult the interviewers to talk about in five years' time, I'm going to be doing your job, when it might have taken them 10 years to get there and you're saying you're going to do it in five. It looks arrogant. It doesn't look good. And then just think about anything that G4S doesn't care about is not something that you want to be talking about because it's not going to help you and it may harm you. The absolute worst thing to say is getting out of G4S or talking about doing something completely different because the time to talk about leaving a company is not the interview to get a job at the company. That's the worst thing you can say. So give the idea in this answer that you look to build a career with G4S because you may find out that you quite like the job. You may find out that you don't like it, but you need to go into this ideally with an open mind and give it your best shot. So let's look at some things that you could say in the interview. You could talk about moving to plus one. So look at your role. What is the next role? Is it a team leader role? Is it a supervisor? Is it a manager? That might be the next role. And you may talk about how you could progress to that level. You could talk about gain additional responsibility. So within your role, you want to have some more responsibility. For example, you might like to mentor new staff. Be someone that is so secure and so confident in that role that you would hope that in five years you would be someone that management would go to as a great person to mentor and, and support new staff. You might say that you'd like to progressively take on more leadership. You might say that you hope to become a supervisor, because of course, with five years experience, you would perhaps be ready to take on some supervising. You want to say that in five years, you will have built a very good reputation at the company and you will be a very trusted, reliable, dependable team member. You could also say that you're interested in getting more qualifications and express an interest in any qualifications that you think you would like to develop. And then another good thing to say is that in five years, you want to be truly outstanding in, my, in the role. So be confident that you can do the role and this is the right job for you, but say that you're committed to continuous improvement. And at the end of five years, you want to be really, really outstanding in that role. And that's a good way to talk about it if you're not looking for a promotion. So have a basic answer, maybe three or four bullet points about where you see yourself going in five years and you'll be ready for this question. Before we finish, here are some questions that you could ask G4S at the end of your job interview. They probably will ask you, do you have any questions for us? And you have to say yes, and you need to have two to three questions ready to go. So I'm going to give you a few suggestions and you can pick from these. So you could say, can you tell me more about the team I could be working with and how my role fits into the organization and find out a little bit more about what the job actually involves and show a lot of interest in this? You could say, could you tell me about the next steps in G4S hiring process or find out when will you find out if you've got the job, show that you're really eager to get the job and you're very interested in the job. And also you probably want to know this anyway. You might ask, what do you like most about working for G4S? And when they say things that they like about the job, share in their enthusiasm and agree with them and take that and bring that into part of your reason why you want to join the company. You may ask what training and progression opportunities are possible for a high performer with G4S over the next five years or so. So show them that you want to see yourself and you aspire to be a high performer and that you're interested in training and progression. And that's a really positive question to answer. And then thank the panel for their time, reinforce that you are really interested in the job and end on a positive. I would avoid talking about taking holidays Avoid talking about delaying start dates. Don't try and negotiate your pay. And don't talk about moving to a different job or moving to a different location when you're applying for this specific job because that may cost you the role. So I hope this was helpful to you. Please post in the comments what questions G4S asked you so we can build up a nice bank of those questions. I'd appreciate it if you like and subscribe. And finally, thank you very much for watching.